So welcome to another uh, exploration into consciousness with the Earth Nouveau Hub. And we're still waiting for others to join us, but we, we're just going to get started here. And today we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about integrity and elevated levels of responsibility. And we want to take it in a context, in a slight, in a context of a legal term, uh, starting off with without prejudice, which is a, a legal term really that is increasingly used in in the business world. And uh, Paul and I, we had a quick chat this morning about it because he comes across it quite a bit nowadays. And I thought it was interesting because it does bring up the question of uh, sovereignty, which we actually have discussed uh, in the last um, in the last session last week. But also, um, you know, responsibility. What, what's the difference? What's actually, let's get started off, Paul. If you just want to say a little bit about, oh, I forgot my phone to read. The, uh, yeah, start talking about what your experiences are without uh, prejudice with that term. And I'm in the meantime, I'm just going to grab my phone quickly. I'll wait for you to come back. No, no, no. Start talking. Okay. So, I mean, basically, you know, for me, I mean, I come across without prejudice quite a lot. Um, and the, the reasoning behind it is that people want to have discussions and negotiations with you um, because they want to formalize a contract or they want to settle a dispute or they want an amendment of something and people call for meetings without prejudice which basically means in the legal sense um, <clears throat> everything that anybody says in that meeting can never be used in the actual contract negotiation or the contract amendment or the, the dispute resolution. And to me, it's, it's, it's actually, why are you even having that conversation where everything you say doesn't count? So how are you supposed to be authentic and true as to what's really going on in your thought process where you're not allowed to use what they saying or what you saying uh, in order to make things happen. Um, so I think it's just such a, a conflict um, between, you know, being true and real uh, 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 versus being a total nothing and just talking for the sake of talking. Um, so, which sort of brings everything back to what is the point of interacting with people where everything you say uh, is not allowed to be used. Um, I mean, it, 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 it's almost as if one is on on stage acting. It's the same as, you know, people in the past have tried to sue record companies and rock bands saying that their lyrics inspired them to kill somebody. I mean, you know, it, 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 to me, it's just a, a strange concept and actually takes us backwards uh, rather than forwards. And if anything, all these without prejudice meetings, all that they result in is just nastiness further down the line because nothing you say uh, in the without prejudice section of your discussions can ever be used. So why bother discussing that? Yeah, so, you know, there's actually, let me read the uh, description of the definition of prejudice without prejudice from just, just the Google version, because there's a slightly different uh, way of looking at it at the same time. And I like because you come from a business perspective and you see it from a practicality point because it's not necessarily what is actually uh, without prejudice, the way it is defined, you know. So in general, I'm just reading the, the thing, a party's admission to something can be used against them in court. 
that without uh, the without prejudice rule means that statements which are made in a genuine attempt to settle a dispute yeah and i think that is really important in a genuine attempt to settle a dispute cannot be used in court as evidence of admissions against the party that made them so the emphasis of without prejudice is actually the genuine attempt, the the an open negotiation for resolution, you know, versus uh, with prejudice, which would mean that whatever you are saying, every statement, every action you you take is actually a consequence consequence that can be used against you. So from that perspective, the, the, the definition itself has a positive meaning because it invites people to communicate and negotiate and explore, elaborate, just a little bit like we do, for the purpose of resolution. Not necessarily just a nothingness, blah, blah. That's it. It's just you and me now, right? Yeah, but we're still recording, so it's going to go out. It's okay. There will be other people coming on. <laughs> what? No, I think that's great because otherwise we never get to talk anyway. So that's good. And I'm not cutting I, anything. I, I so watch, yourself. watch yourself because I'm not cutting anything. I don't know how to cut shit out. All right. <laughs> so let's just carry on. I think. I think. I really do think it's a good. It's a good topic because I think that elevation of responsibility for the the way we communicate with each other. Yeah applies both ways with or without prejudice i mean to me it's uh you know i mean you say something i mean i i tend to find that you know if you say something and it's not allowed to have any effect uh, what's the point of saying it right so it's it's all a little bit sort of living in a i don't want to call it a parallel universe but in a uh, in Alice in Wonderland. I mean, you know, so you you can make up, you, you potentially can make up whatever you want to make up. Um, and that may be believed or not believed, but it can never be used. So, you know, why should you no, not be no, spending let your me go back. Let me go back to the original definition. Yeah. Without prejudice, it's not, it's not to make shit up or to just say things that you're not being held accountable for. But it's actually uh, an open negotiation or a conflict resolution, you know, to find the resolution. And by by just saying without prejudice, I suppose in, you know, we don't say that, hi, Jen, we're just uh, discussing the with and without prejudice thing. And you're in, in the corporate world. So it's it's a good one because you'll come across that as well. And we were just saying that, you know, the way I look at without prejudice is you know, you can actually explore a topic and you take out the fear of so many people that ha they have for not speaking their truth. Now, Paul, you're not one of those guys who has a fear of speaking your truth, but lots of people do, right? And this is why without prejudice just opens up a door for them to come out with what they want to say, not being uh, worried about persecution. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, I agree fully with you. The only part I don't agree with, and it's a term that I absolutely abhor and find abominable. And it's something that's crept into our vocabulary. Well, the global vocabulary is... is speaking your truth well you know it's basically i like to replace that word with giving your view or your opinion because you know just because you believe it's true i mean flat earthers believe the earth's true fine let them believe that but it's not true right so it's i actually think that too many people hide behind speaking their truth whereas We'd be a lot better off if people actually gave their view and stick to their view. But I think more animosity is created globally by everybody running around saying, this is my truth. We yeah, are fine. It's your opinion. And you know what? I think everybody's entitled to their opinion, but it doesn't mean it's true. It's what you believe. I mean, if you believe it, fine. But to sort of subject 
other people to and 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 get upset when they don't buy into your truth um you know because by definition if what you think you're saying is your truth and true and when i don't believe it then the immediate connotation is i think you're a liar and and that's why i like the word view that's my yeah. view Right? Yeah, but that, so that's, I, I hate this talk of this is my truth. I mean, it is an absolute nonsense. Sorry. <laughs> okay. okay, no, no, that, that's fine because the emphasis is on your truth. Uh, yeah, but your so truth are, is your opinion. Yeah, you know? well, yeah, you, my, you, my truth is I'm going to win the lottery. No, that's my view. It's not the truth. No, listen to first what I'm saying, yeah? The emphasis is on your truth. Nobody says it's the truth because there is no such thing as one truth. But all our truths or opinions for that matter, it doesn't really matter which word you want to use. No, it does. It does. Because, because the op truth is always associated with lie. Always. I would say that if you can take yourself out of being in a place where you feel like you have to defend anything right then those words those words to me don't matter people can say whatever they want they can say whatever they want it doesn't impact my experience my truth because i am the creator of my reality so people can use whatever words they want to to express themselves and to formulate their opinion and to express it it doesn't have to affect me so they can say truth they can say view they can say belief None of that has, it, it doesn't penetrate my my barrier. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. It's the music when you can take yourself out of the emotion of it. I mean, and I, and I, and, 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 and I like the word you use there. This is my, I, I use the word uh, opinion. Uh, I often write emails where I say, I believe. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of the animosity that we have globally is, People running around saying, this is my truth. No, that's your view. And it, it gets, I think one of the reasons why we have so much anger in, in this world is because we've got to put up with this kind of vocabulary. Now, I know that you're true to yourself and for you personally, it's your truth. But when you, not you, but when people in general start saying, well, I'm sorry, guys, this is my truth. I mean, you know, I think that we we create so many problems by using words innocently, um, because you know it's it's human nature. It's like something's black and white. Um, it's the company's in the black or the company's in the red. That and 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 truth is associated with lie. This is why I think we have so many problems. When I have no problem with people's belief system or how they view the world. But I have a major problem when people walk around saying, this is my truth, because I don't care. I'm like you guys. I don't care. But it's totally misinterpreted by people who hear it. And I think it creates a lot of problems. Okay, well, well noted. Uh, Jen, yeah? You want to reply to that? Well, I think that uh, in it, in my experience, the people that, that go around saying speaking my truth from a point of defensiveness and and prejudice or being defensive of prejudice it's it's where they are right now in their level of awareness and sure it creates problems but when you look at people that are on that plane of awareness that's where you have conflict and war and and Lawsuits on companies for somebody saying the wrong word and, and things like that. It, it's choice whether or not to entangle with it or to pull yourself out of that plane of awareness. Yeah, and I think this is this is this is a big point uh, Jen just made. You know, whatever jargon people use, and we know words are spells, and and so many people are really really habitually addicted to certain words. You know, um, but you always have a choice to either get entangled with it, to get upset about that or not. The funny bit is when we came up with this uh, topic this morning, I was actually uh, thinking our gatherings are all without prejudice. <laughs> 
where all of us are just having a conversation. We're bringing up opinions, our truths, our ideas, our points of views, but we have no uh, fear of any consequences, you know, that we are being persecuted because of our opinions. Because wow. masters of non judgment, right? And prejudice is just prejudging a situation. Exactly. And that's why it was so interesting when Paul, uh, you know, mentioned this this morning to me, because obviously what's happening in the business world, this it's a legal term without prejudice, and it's being more and more adapted in the business world. Now, for us, this is interesting because we would call it allowance anyway. We wouldn't say the legal term without prejudice. We say treat people with allowance of their choices, their opinions, their truths. But the business world is latching on to the concept of inclusion, cooperation, you know, neutrality, sacred neutrality. But of course, they're using without prejudice. And in a, in a way, this is... Uh, this is not a bad thing, or is it? I think it's a terrible thing. <laughs> you can look at it two ways, right? You got to look at the flip side of all of it. In one sense, I love that they use our words because even if they take it wrong at first, it's infiltrating, it's integrating, it'll seep in and it will help with shifting people as they start to use the words and they understand better what they mean. But on on Paul's side of thing, I was late to the conversation, so I'm catching up with I'm I'm understanding the assignment now. So when when you're in a corporate world, you you can easily find yourself in a place of being defensive because you're trying to protect the company, protect business, and to have everything make sense in a business context when the world itself doesn't make sense. It's a very hard position to be in, especially when people start coming at you with with these, I don't know, light workery terms with the emotion behind it, but not the level of awareness that they balance with, right? So that that's what sparked the topic for today. Yeah, that's what sparked the topic for today. That increase of use that legal term and 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 a couple of other things, you know, that obviously Paul being right in that kind of uh, arena and end you as well it's it's perfect to bring this up to actually look at that because it gives us food for thought and and we can see how you know the the heightened levels of awareness you know are filtering through but they are not going in the in in one particular way there's so many different ways so many uh, crooks and and you know where and holes where where things where that awareness that uh, elevated consciousness is trickling through and i love it that it that you know people even start thinking along those lines you know because everything needs to be redefined i mean which word have we not used to redefine yet because everything has so many different meanings on so many different levels and it's the choice of every individual being in a business setting, in a legal setting, or in a just personal setting, to choose those words very carefully. And when you, uh, I mean, I, I mean the, the issue I've got with it is 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 authenticity. Um, so you go, you're having a discussion. It's a without prejudice discussion, uh, and so. You to use your term, you speak your truth, but uh, everything you say um, is to be totally ignored from when something happens with prejudice or w without the without prejudice. So to me, it it it. What's the point of being authentic in a without pre prejudice discussion? Um, then what should you be in a without without prejudice discussion if you can't be authentic as you were in the without prejudice discussion? That to me is a dichotomy. Well, in a corporate setting, like I bridge both worlds, right? And yeah. so I choose my words to be very neutral and to be without prejudice. Couple things. You know, I always look at what's in the best interest of the project or the objective or the budget or whatever it is. Like take out the human aspect of it. What's in the best interest of the ultimate outcome 
And how does everybody align for that? So that it's not about people and personalities and belief systems and stuff like that. It's just about making the parts work in the right arrangement to create the outcome that I want. So that, that's one. And then when it comes to the people aspect of things and like managing people, like the way I express without prejudice is I give everybody the right to be themselves. I don't try to change anybody's viewpoint, behaviors, anything like that. I just try to set the expectation and let everybody be who they are because they're going to say whatever they want to say and they're going to have whatever religious viewpoints that they have or cultural viewpoints or everybody has a different energy level some people are really slow some people work really fast so like how do you just make people feel okay with who they are and find a way to like build up their strengths and offset their weaknesses by balancing with other people it's always a chess game being a business person is playing a game and finding a way to make all the parts work without being emotionally tied to it and holding a place in neutrality. Once I get my emotions involved in it, it always goes to hell in a handbasket. And and let me add to this. Paul, okay, you go. I mean, I get what you're saying, right? But you know, if you if you are to have meaningful discussion, and I always think that if you're having meaningful discussion, it should lead to meaningful change if change is what re- is required. Uh, then why can't you use what you've discussed on a very civil basis with be it your co-workers or the management or client or uh, the supermarket manager or cashier, uh, why can't you enact what you've discussed? Um, why why must that all count for nothing? And only at a later stage, and I'm looking at here purely from a, a practical business point of view and, a, and, a, and an everyday life thing, right? I mean, at the end of the day, when we have discussions amongst ourselves, they are by definition without prejudice because I think everybody on this group is a decent person. No one's going to use something that somebody has said here to harm that person further down the line, right? So I mean, that's why the without prejudice thing is there in business, is that it's to, to make sure that when you get to the real crux of the matter or to the real put pen on paper, that no one is is harmed by what you discussed, Right. But I think in everyday life, everything is with de- by definition without prejudice. So, you know, um, I okay, think okay. we've got Sorry, to split the two. Can I stop you right there? Because otherwise I forget. Sorry to interrupt you there. But there is so much prejudice in that statement you've just made. Not from your perspective, but from, from, the, from the narrative. Because, you know, uh, who is the one who chooses or who decides to put consequences for a particular opinion of somebody else. Who is there to decide to say, oh, you've said the wrong thing and now you're going to be persecuted or something like that? I don't don't think that even comes into the equation. I I, I don't think that's even a Well, it is in a way. It is in a way because when somebody needs to be harmed because they have said certain things that this is prejudice this is a consequence of what they were saying and this is uh, this is why this whole topic today is about integrity and the thing what we must add to this conversation here is actually that words by themselves are not the only thing that gets communicated it's the energy and we talked and you used the 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 authenticity now you can be, you can say absolutely nothing, sit there in total neutrality, but be authentic in your truth, in your non-spoken opinion and create huge change. Because whatever you say, whichever word you use, it doesn't matter. It has to come from here. It has to come from your authentic voice, your authentic heart space. And I'll, I'll say what I said before in different words. You can talk to the supermarket person and the field technician and the housekeeper and the president of a country and the CEO of a company 
all authentically, but you have to meet them where they are and you have to use the vocabulary that they can interact with. And maybe it's not fair that you have to adapt yourself, but it's not necessarily being unauthentic. It's just using the skills that you've learned to, to let somebody be who they are, where they are and have that dialogue with you. So maybe instead of saying to empower them to be who they are and feel good about who they are, you meet them where they are and use the words that they can process. And that, yeah. that's not necessarily, you know, uh, we're talking about a heightened level of consciousness here. Yeah. We're talking about mediatorship. We're talking about leaders. We're talking about leadership in business environment and in personal environment. You know, people who know what is required in order to get what they want and what is also a contribution for the other side. You know, so they are outcome, they are outcome uh, focused without having a conclusive expectation of the outcome. And I would say too that prejudice in and of itself is hypocritical, right? Because you say something that makes somebody feel prejudiced, but you end up being the one that feels the recourse of it because they raise the flag that it's anti-diversity inclusion and they report you to HR like it's it's not one-sided prejudice that, that you have an opinion that somebody else doesn't like. You experience the recourse of them being triggered by what you said. Does that make sense? But it, I don't know. To me, it, it doesn't even matter anymore. Like whatever... Whatever that conflict is, it's just a matter of how do I neutralize it? Like I don't, it doesn't trigger me anymore. I just look at it as how do I neutralize it? Okay, well, I mean, that's, that's it, it very much depends from which place you come from. You know, if you want to be controversial, then obviously just go for it. But if you want to actually be solution oriented and you want to be working, you want to bring the, a team together from a leadership perspective, then, you know, you would you would go with the without prejudice. And I'm I'm finding it quite exciting, to be honest, that this is being taken into the business world misunderstood or not but as a jargon that is now inviting people to allow a bit more inclusiveness yeah I enjoy that too I also think that there is a a place for the person who does spark the controversy because nothing changes until it gets stirred up right so there's a place for all of those human behaviors it's just which one do you want to be Absolutely, absolutely. So, how does uh, Paul? How does that in in your in your personal uh, business perspective have have you had any examples where it backfired or? Oh, the, the thing is, uh, further down the line, maybe Jen has experienced this. Is that first and foremost? I think we need to split into, I think that when we speak amongst friends and family, it's always without prejudice because in friends and family, there's an element of trust. Um, so you don't anticipate that they will start gossiping about the conversation you had, right? So therefore, by definition, everything's without prejudice. prejudice. It can't be used outside the four walls unless somebody specifically asked somebody to go and speak to somebody else about what you discussed. I get that. But in the business world, it's, it's completely different because, um, and now we're going off on a bit of a tangent here because in the business world, you have a without prejudice meeting and five minutes later, what you discussed in the meeting, some guy's written into a contract. And because without prejudice meetings, nine out of 10 times, no minutes are kept, right? So it's, to me, that the whole concept in the business world is it's a waste of time. And it, it's in fact, it's disingenuous because nobody ever really sticks to it. So let's stop wasting our time 
and just cut to the chase, and I'm talking again here in the business world, is, is you know, this without prejudice nonsense. Um, to me, it, it's all a bit meaningless. I mean, mean what you say and say what you mean um, and get on with it. You know, it's, it's, I don't know how many times I've flown halfway across the world only to arrive there and they say this is without prejudice meeting. And I go, really? I, I thought we had to get something done. You know, so that's the problem that I've got with it. Paul, and, Paul speak, speak into the thing, please. We can't hear you. Well, did you hear anything? Yes, we did. Just don't look uh, over there. Just keep looking into the computer. Yeah, so, so, but I mean, I okay. So, so in the business world, and I, I want to be very clear. I, 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 you have you to split your personal world from the business world, even though you transfer your personality into the business world. But what I'm saying is, uh, you. You have a without prejudice meeting, but you can't police the outcome of those discussions and the the usage of what has been said in that meeting. So to me, it's a, it's an inauthentic. Is that is it inauthentic or unauthentic? Inauthentic, I think. It it's an inauthentic concept, but it's one that I tend to find that to me it's it's not an empowering thing, it's a weakening thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think because, this... because how you, how are you able to contribute to anything where anything you everything you say cannot be used? I mean, it's a bit idiotic. Well, it's that it, again. It lies in the definition, as I read it before. Without without prejudice, the way it is defined is actually as open negotiation to uh, to create a cooperative resolution. So the the emphasis is on let's talk. We don't have to worry about what we're saying, but let's create a solution. That's without prejudice. Yeah. That's actually what it what how it is defined. Now, the opposite would be with prejudice is say be very careful what you're saying, because we're actually not up here for finding a solution for this problem, but I will take you up on whatever you said and there will be consequences. It's a little bit, it's a little bit how we were brought up. Yeah, it wasn't about creating a solution for the child or the mother or the father, but it was more like it was with prejudice. You do as I'm as I'm as I'm telling you. And if you don't do it, then, you know, there will be consequences. And that was started the installation of, of fear, you know, and, and this is what we're trying to uh, obviously eradicate in our lifetimes get rid of that fear but this is I, I i really like it that we're still getting you know lots and lots of triggers and a discussion about it because it really um emphasizes re-emphasizes the importance of integrity and the importance of heightened responsibility for being authentic you know so yes and you're absolutely right paul you know by the time we we are there you know, we will have discussions where with or without prejudice will no longer be having to be mentioned because everyone is just speaking their truth. And this is another another element here, which where I'm, I'm going to take it up a, a real notch here because we are actually moving in a direction where, you know, we are starting to become much more telepathic, all of us. So with or without prejudice, it's actually totally... Uh, an idiotic statement, as you say, because we can now from, in, in, you know, more or less start picking up what other people think anyway. And anything said without authenticity, you will be picked up on. I had a, wait, wait, I, I still work with her. I I've, I've, have an employee that I've worked with for almost 20 years now. And uh, I worked with her like they were a consultant to me when I was the client for a while and then I hired her when I came into the private uh, consulting community and when I started doing her annual like performance evaluation I'd make her cry <laughs> and like I, I don't use unkind words even even 15, 20 years ago and I didn't understand why it was always that reactive with her and I thought I was choosing my words carefully. And a, a friend of mine was going through problems with his wife and, and she lived in a complete 
victim La La Land scenario and was making up stories about what had happened to her. And he was like, well, it doesn't really matter whether or not it's true. It's her truth. And when he said that, it triggered something in, in me that made me realize that like when I was talking to my my employee, that like it wasn't what I said. It was how she received it and how her perspective made it her truth. And once I could see it from that perspective, I could totally shift how I talked to her so that I could flip it around. Like I put myself in her chair and what words did I need to say for her to receive what I was trying to say without it being reactive to her. Having those words thrown at me like that in a completely different context helped me turn myself around so that I could adapt how I communicated with her so I could get my point across. Because people don't hear the words that you say. People receive it from whatever level of trauma they have or whatever perspective or how they view the world, whatever their reality is, that's their truth. Doesn't mean that's what you said at all. So for me, I looked at it for like, how do I get her to feel what I need her to feel instead of saying my words? Yeah, and I think, that, I, that I, is part of the telepathy. So correct. I mean, it's... <clears throat> Look, I, I, I suffer from something like that pretty much on a daily basis because I'm quite forthright and direct and it's it's not there to 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 pressurize people or to make them feel bad. I think, you know, when you work in a high pressure environment where you you know, we are paid pretty well because they rely on us to make decisions. Um and you know Sometimes people expect three sentences at the water fountain in the morning, and sometimes you can only give them one sentence because your phone's ringing and all of that. And I, I do get that. And I think at the end of the day, you know, it, it, it can take us into a whole new realm of having a discussion about subjectivity. Um, you know, it's it's the, I mean, one man's freedom fighter is another man's terrorist. You know, it, it's that sort of thing, you know. So I think at the end of the day, you know, I don't worry too much about that because I'm I'm very secure within myself that I have certainly not uh, set out to cause harm or it is not premeditated if people have seen it that way, um, I mean, I've seen people get offended when you say good morning to them because they didn't like the tone that you use. So, you know, I get what you're saying, but by the same time, I think at the end of the day, if if if, if you're off, I think you know when we talk about authenticity, I think the starting point is you. The starting point is you have to be authentic to yourself first. If you're not authentic to yourself, you'll never be authentic to anybody else. So, or you'll never be perceived as being authentic to other people. So, you know, I mean, what you, you know, I mean, what you what you went through with your twenty year co colleague. I mean, I, I don't think that's unique to you. I think think everybody's got that. Um, does that mean that you have to change? Um, no, in my opinion. Does that mean that you maybe change? your style without losing the emphasis of what you're trying to get across, uh, maybe. The way I look at it is I didn't have to be unauthentic to change how I communicated with that person. Yeah. I understood the formula to get the result that I wanted out of that person. And so I just adapted my delivery for gotcha. that. Yeah. But you can find yourself in a place where you become inauthentic if you're trying to please everybody. But that's not yeah. what I, in that instance, that's not what my outcome was. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting different results, right? So I exactly. had to do something differently to get the result that I wanted in yeah. a way that could be received, but wasn't out of character for me. It's also I want I want to throw in the 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 other saying here that we've used before is with heightened levels of awareness comes heightened levels of responsibility, you know, it's uh it, it it's just like that. 
Um, the more responsibility you, to whom or to what? To to anything that you are uh, entertain, because it's a responsibility to yourself as much as it is to the person. Because you know it, or to the project that you're working on, the business that you're in. Because from a from a from a leadership perspective, you want to get things done. You don't want to, you know, trigger people left, right, and center. You you have a goal set. You have an outcome that you want to achieve, and you have people that you want to achieve it with. So the question is, you know, how can you maintain your integrity, your authenticity, your truth, your opinions, and actually create all of that in a speedy manner without getting it delayed by you know emotional chaos and turmoil and who is right and who is wrong and competition and hierarchy and all this bullshit and this is how this is the new kind of business that we're looking for this is the new kind of leader that we're looking for somebody who has a capacity to not not be the goody two shoes. No, that's not what we're saying here. But to do whatever it takes to achieve whatever is required and needed and desired and aspired in that particular moment in time. And sometimes I'm absolutely with all of the uh, the emotions. Sometimes it takes to to just erupt, to get angry. But you can do this with the level of integrity. Part of it too is what do you want? <laughs> you know, I where and where do you want to put your energy? So I like my job fine and I'm good at it and I enjoy a lot of the aspects of it, but like I have no desire to climb the corporate ladder and and be in a I don't want to put my energy into being like the highest person in the hierarchy in the room doesn't matter doesn't mean I won't find myself there sometime anyway because like I don't know things fall in front of you at the right time sometimes but I prefer to put my energy into where I want to be spiritually energetically mentally and emotionally not so much in my income bracket and so if being a mover and a shaker is what brings you joy and it comes with the friction of some of the decisions that you have to make and and some of the exterior that you have to hold to be that person in the room then be that and be great at it if that's what makes you happy then be that you don't have to use the same words that we do and hold yourself in the same energy and frequency and light bulb whatever, whatever you want to describe it as we don't have to all be the same person and we don't have to be aiming for the same thing. We all have different objectives and different places that we want to be. So guys, let's, uh, I'm, I want to actually take this into the leadership because that's, that's really where this is going. And that could be in the, you know, and I know this uh, girl, she, she's just written a book and she has a nice little chapter about leadership in there. And I was thinking maybe it's just a page, yeah? Page and, and a bit. I'm just going to read uh, the pioneering leaders in action. And I'm not, I don't think I've used the words, uh, obviously, uh, with or without prejudice, but that's just something that I can see that could be required on, in the way, on the way forward to all of that. So, pioneering leaders in action so prophecies of ancient cultures from every part of the globe speak of a great transformation a foretelling of a new human who is free of fear and full of ancient future wisdom now ready and prepared to accept their guardianship for all sentient creation a leader is his own fault leadership is not bestowed on this new human but is a natural result of a mastered and healed being operating with sovereign conduct by closing the gap between one's honest aims and those openly declared for the sake of fitting in, the leader finds courage and commitment to seek out a greater and more adventurous vision that meets the requirements of the soul's purpose and aspiration. 
everyone's individualized journey has to be one of honoring and heeding the genetic inheritance in order to move forward as a masterful thought leader of the self and others in a body that ages, heals, and dies differently with a soul that has come into full expression. The Latin word of authority is octoritas, which comes from octor and translates as the originator and promoter. True tra transformational leaders will have trained to be well adjusted to their physical existence, as well as to the invisible world of energy and spirit. They will embody a sound level of authority that is recognized, but not limited to the material realm. Oh. It's one of self-governed inner guidance and outer directiveness. Hold on, Mary's coming in here. This new earth needs embodied wisdom and peacekeepers who have duly mastered their micro-personality self and function on a macro level of the mental plane, where all context is clearly seen and being orchestrated from. They no longer thrive on recognition or competition and operate from vision and true compassion beyond the need for validating applause. They appreciate the existence of solar planetary hierarchies, but not those that are fabricated by plutocrats and kleptocrats to dominate and isolate an entire species. As stewards of this earth, they actively seek to assemble mastermind groups to pioneer new ideas and methods that affect all planes of existence. So a true leader's ability and readiness to head up and work in harmonious group dynamics does not only empower and motivate the individual member of the group, but encourages all its collective multidimensional workforce. With a keen awareness of the need for independent responsibility and teamwork that serves humanity and all sentient creation, leaders claim and fulfill their destiny and naturally attract followers through the mag magnetic sphere of influence. Let's join those who are pra practiced in silence, clean in energy, diverse in action, pure in thought and motive, precise in spoken and written word, and imaginatively orientated towards a great vision. Open your mind to universal concepts, perceptions, and experiences. Open your heart to lovingly desire multidimensional connectivity. Open your gut to intuit your soul's messages. Open your eyes and observe with gratitude, compassion, and boundless grace. Lovely. Thank you. Hi, Mary. Hi. Hi. I'm just sorry I'm late. Uh, no worries. No worries. Good to have you here. We're just talking about integrity, elevated responsibility, for how we conduct business, how we communicate with each other, um, with authority, with authenticity, with integrity, mm. and uh, yeah, that kind of thing. Sounds interesting. I haven't been listening, so I don't know what you have said. So I'll okay. Just... Yeah. Okay. So with what I've read just now, is, is there anything that's come up for anyone who actually listen? Okay, so this is obviously a very good example of choices of words that do not necessarily uh, hit everyone. And this is just you know, my experience where we're talking about choosing the words so that other people can hear it. I, when I write books, I do not do that at all. Yeah. Because I write the way I enjoy writing, the way it comes to me. And I'm very clear on the message being received by not the majority of the population but the significant um, minority of people who are on a certain path. Now, does that mean I can speak with integrity? I can speak with authenticity? Yes, because I'm fully aware of, not the outcome, I'm fully aware of my intention. So I wouldn't say that your words don't resonate because they do. I was just trying to formulate my thoughts because it it um, 
I don't know, it throws back to me what I just said, <laughs> right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, one, no, no. one of my lessons was was learning the frequency of no, and I got really good at saying no, and now I have to soften that and remember how to say yes again to things that I don't think I want to do. Um, but yes, well, what I understand and, and what I know is part of where I am right now is being one of those leaders holding the frequency and being able to emanate that in rooms at all levels of the equation, right? And I'm working on that, but there's a lot of that that I don't have an interest in. And so like, I, I just say no to it and I look at something else. But it does speak to me that, that that reminds me that I need to remember to start saying yes, even when at the moment it's not something that I choose because it doesn't bring me joy. But mm. it doesn't mean it's not part of the responsibility. Yeah. So what we're basically saying here is that integrity and heightened responsibility has many, many, many different faces, many, many different uh, ways of, uh, of looking at it. And uh, I think the main indicator, the key element of all of that is whatever you speak, speak your truth, speak your opinion, speak your whatever you speak, speak it with conviction, speak it with integrity. And the one of the things is do not have expectations what others make of it or not make make of it, you know, because you are not responsible necessarily for how people are taking it so this is going it, it depends what you want to do it depends where you are sometimes you you slip into the mediator role then you step up and you slip into a different role and this is this is that shape shifting capacity that we're all needing to be able to master in this in this world where you know we actually have no idea what's going on you have to be able to move on the spot be whoever you need to be right now in order to to work with this unpredictability that we are going through at the moment and as long as you're holding your level of integrity it's not inauthentic to be the shapeshifter and exactly. present yourself in a different character to be able to convey the message exactly so who wants to chip into this mary sounds, sounds interesting um martina i suppose I'm, I'm just in a couple of minutes but i'm already excited enough to want to say something um yeah. I, I i'm just listening there about you know having integrity and speaking your truth and always being truthful in what you speak and I, I absolutely would agree with that because I think it carries a certain energy. And and I think that, you know, it is integrous too, not to speak sometimes, not to say whatever it is your your opinion is. And I think sometimes for me, it's also being integrous if I ask a question rather than speak or say something or make a statement. I'm, I'm just listening to ye and figuring out how I have, sort of managed that in my life and I suppose at the moment for me I'm trying to be really in in my integrity in doing nothing which is really hard because I'm always somebody who saw you know my integrity as out there doing something being with people saying something teaching you know being the therapist whatever it is and I seem to have been in to have you know chosen a space that it's it's and this is why I'm saying this is where this came from about you know being integrous when you don't say anything that's kind of where I'm at and it's really really strange but I know that I'm being really true though to myself in that space strange and all as it is I wobble in it um there are certain people that that have pushed and challenged me in it and that that is great because i can see exactly where i am but i'm not prepared to to move yet and I, and i don't mean move as in move out or move away or do anything like that i just mean i'm not prepared to move <laughs> it's like um the bigger picture kind of thing of moving it's like i'm holding something I'm holding a certain space for myself and 
maybe that it has an effect on other people around me. I think it does. I, I don't know because I, I didn't ask. And it's, it's, again, it's not something that I, I could discuss even. I actually couldn't discuss it now that I say that because I wouldn't have the words to to even discuss it. But I'm gone into that sort of a deep, integrous, quiet place that isn't familiar to me, uh, but I'm okay in it. So I suppose, what am I trying to say? I don't know. I'm just telling you how I am, really. No, thank you. Thanks, Mary. It takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of courage to do this, especially when mm. you come from a place of, you know, doing, 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 being the mm. one, looking after other people, you know, carrying the loads and all of it, you know. And and Paul, you you probably just imagine you you've gone through a bit of a phase at work as well, right? Where you just withdrawn a little bit. How was that for you in the business? You know, for us it's different because we're outside already. Mm. Look, I think at the end of the day, with all these things, there's a little bit of ebb and flow and there's up and down because that's the nature of life. So with all these things, I think that you you make your contribution um, in an unforced way um, and then you allow people to react or respond to that, and they can do that in various ways, either positively or negatively, but you've got to allow them time to get to that point. So that's why I sort of run it that way as well, where when I'm on fire, I'm up there, and then when I withdraw, I wouldn't say I'm down there, but I'm sort of more on the on the flat baseline, on the, let's call it the zero axis. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, I think in business, you've got to be careful to firstly not overwhelm the people you work with, which um, if you do that, they overwhelm the clients. And if the clients are not at the same level that you are at, be it awareness wise or whatever, you'll drive the client away. So um, I think withdrawal into um a space where you're not doing too much talking is a good thing provided it's a comfortable withdrawal and a comfortable let's say silence if it's a dark and broody and black silence that permeates and that gets staff rattled and if staff are rattled it it projects onto the client so i i don't believe that you know, I mean, to use an example, I think it was Steve Ballmer who was the number two at Microsoft. I mean, his roadshows were always screaming and shouting and dancing and jumping up and down and just too much. So, and I think that was the criticism that he came in for where people eventually just sort of, you know, depending who you're talking to, some people are easily overwhelmed some people are easily underwhelmed and some people are not whelmed at all. Not that whelms a word, but I, I think at the end of the day, I mean, the way I tend to look at things is that when I go into a, a meeting or into a room, and you know this, I mean, I never do any preparation for the simple reason is that it's like having a battle plan. You know, every every good military commander will tell you You've got the best battle plan and you tear it up the minute the first shot is fired. So when you walk into a room, if the energy that you're perceiving is so bad and, you're, and, you, and you just know your presentation or your paperwork's not going to work, you have to find a different way to do it. So I don't think there's a one size fits all. Um, I think if you can if you can read the room or read the people energetically you know what to do because it's the same as in a negotiation sometimes the best way to negotiate is to not negotiate so it's it i, I don't think you can put it all into one silo it depends very much on the situation and, and who you're dealing with 
I think you're making a great point here. I mean, that's another yeah. point of integrity, isn't it? You know, I mean, you're speaking from a business perspective and that's slightly different to, to personal, you know, um, going inward and all that kind of thing. But I love the, what you just said because you're talking about being really present. Yeah. You know? And um, he's talking about being the shapeshifter, right? Yeah. Because you have to be all the people, all the versions of yourself to be a whole that is dynamic and adaptable yeah 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 like and it made me wonder uh, sorry it it made me wonder it made me wonder listening i suppose paul too uh, uh, just about myself and in relation to integrity um sometimes you know this is a question now more than a statement but I, i just think sometimes do we have to sort of tailor the integrity a bit you know to suit the environment around us because if we were truly, really integrous, would we even scare ourselves? <laughs> um, you know, I, I do think actually listening to you, I could hear that there was a skill. And I think this is a good thing. And I think this is something that we all operate out of as well. Like while we're integrous and while we know what it is that we're in and what we're feeling and what we want to do and all of that, we still can bring that to the table and we can sort of let it meld into whatever it is that's there while still holding that though and holding the essence of it and I think that's a great skill and and I think that's what you're describing Paul actually in the way that you manage the meetings and that you manage the staff and you know you're aware of the staff and how the staff would feel if if you were in a particular way and it doesn't mean that you lose what you have it doesn't mean you lose that knowing that integrity that you have in the knowing how you are but you're you're able to tailor it just slightly so that you can bring the people with you. And I just think that that's worth mentioning because I think we do that actually without even realizing it. Would anyone agree? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think I think that shape shifting is an integral part of integrity. I, I, yeah. I can't take it apart. For me, this is that is integrity, is being all you can be. And if you define it as that, you can be anything without yeah. judgment. You can be everything and nothing at yeah. the same time. That takes us back yeah. up into that yeah. sort of spiritual. Uh, Jen, you wanted to say something? Sorry. Well, there's a saying that keeps coming to my mind as everybody's talking to that not everybody's going to like you and you don't have to care, right? So that's part of it too, that if you're being authentic and you're having integrity in and you're trying to play the game to the best of your abilities with integrity, how other people perceive that if it doesn't work with them, doesn't matter. I mean, clients have at a complexity to that, that I understand Paul, but like in a general context, that's an important thing for me to keep at the forefront of my mind too, because not everybody's going to receive me the way yeah. I project myself, and that's okay. Well, yeah. uh, knowing Paul for, for 25 years now, he is a master. It's one of his major gifts of not caring if people like him or not. It makes absolutely no difference to this guy. It's not that awesome. <laughs> no, 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 no. That, uh, for me, that's always something yeah. I need to learn this. Yeah, yeah. And I'm still learning. After 25 years, you know, I'm still learning this. And there is, there is, because what I want to say to this is there is actually no prejudice in that at all. There is no yeah. judgment in that. There is no point of view in that. There is complete space in that. And this yeah. is what I, I appreciate with Paul because he has a lot of opinions and a lot of points of views and a lot of truths and everything. And at the same time, he does not make you try to get on board. You can be what he's that spacious, you know, and yeah. that is a huge gift in this reality where everything is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Everything is limited. Everything is concluded, you know. So it's quite interesting how how the just the energy of somebody can portray that. 
Yes, it's fascinating, Martina. It really is. And that's what I was trying to say in what I was saying as well, the way that, that Paul can hold that and he can hold that space while being able to blend in with, you know, whatever else is around and not forcing or not not doing anything other than just holding it. It's 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 just wonderful to watch, I suppose. I find that wonderful to watch. And I think that if we can do that, you know, comfortably like that, as comfortably as Paul seems to be doing it, I don't think it can get any better than that in, in being in holding your integrity. I'd say there's always a room for improvement, if I may. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> no, I mean, it's it's like those, those uh, uh, phrases like reading the room, you know, observation yeah. of thinking, but being present, you know, being really present um, with what is. And also you what we mustn't uh, what we must remember actually is nowadays, you know, with all the timelines actually merging and we are perceiving the past and the future at the same time, it becomes a heightened um, responsibility because we are no longer just having to be present in this moment here right now but we as the avatars have to be present for all our other shards parts and avatars and versions in all these different dimensions and that might not speak to everyone but you know we are starting to really bring all of those different aspects of ourselves into the conversation and that mm -hmm. takes a masterful uh, so so it's like if you think about it you're not just communicating with the person opposite you you are speaking to their versions to the entourage that he or she is bringing in whilst your uh, you know parts have something to you know say to them too and you are you know you don't get out of the mediator role mm -hmm. whatever, whatever you think you're doing you will have to learn and master becoming a mediator yes yeah, I agree. Paul, oh, I know you're not necessarily looking at different shards, parts, and avatars. So, so, but is that something that you can sort of relate to when when we talk about that? Or well, how can we word it for you that you could appreciate it more? No, I don't know what an avatar is. I, I think there's a blue creature running around in a James Cameron film. Um, so I, I don't know what those words mean, to be honest with you. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I think at the end of the day, for me, it's very simple, is that you can say a lot by saying a lot, and you can also say a lot by saying a little. And it depends on, you know, just think of a, of a comedian walking onto stage any good comedian knows automatically whether he's going to struggle that night or or whether it's going to go well. And the great comedians like Richard Pryor, who, I mean, to me, was the greatest of all time, he could tear up his entire script and get the entire crowd on his side. So, you know, Avatar this and other words, I mean, I, I don't know, but I think that... I always look at it this way and I always go, if I was sitting in the crowd, what would I like to be hearing? And if you can tap into your inner self in that regard and and put yourself in the position of those people, then, I mean, that's most the battle won. And then, you know, I mean, you then get into, into the topic at hand and you know, I always look at it this way, you know, I mean, the one thing Mark Twain said, um, if you never tell a lie, it means you never have to remember anything. So in, the, in, in, in presentations like that, you never lie. But you, you, you say just enough, which is probably not as compre comprehensive as you would be, because if you get too comprehensive, you lose the people. But you say just enough to keep them there and not fidgety and uh, looking at their watches, because at the end of the day, we come back to the, the subject of subjectivity. So whatever you say is to them is going to be subjective. And I have a simple rule that whatever I say is going to be taken as subjective 
maybe 60% is taken on board and the other 40% is discarded. So um, I'd rather narrow down, you know, if I have um, uh, a short list of things that I want to get across um, versus the long list for a different audience, then I'm prepared to do that. Because at the end of the day, what they believe and what they don't believe or, or what they take on board or, or what they don't take on board is, is subjective. I think where people make the mistake is they try and force what they're saying upon the audience uh, by, you know, raising their voice and screaming and shouting. and But, but in, in a theatrical way, like Steve Ballmer used to do. I used to find it, I mean, he opened his mouth and I immediately switched off. So because he had one style, so whether he was talking to the president of the USA or whether he was talking to a road sweeper in Vietnam, he had the same style, uh, which I always thought was wrong. So, you know, I think all of this, I think where, where a lot of people make the mistake is they allow the ego to come in and they desperate to get their point across and they they push harder and harder and harder to get the point across not knowing that they're pushing the people further and further away from them and it's one of the things i learned earlier very early in my career if you want to call it a career i still don't know what i'm doing um is that the harder you chase something the faster it runs so i, I think at the end of the day it's not something that you're born with i think it's something that comes over time and you know the more you practice it you better the better you get it it's like gary player the golfer said the more the more the more i practice golf the luckier i get on the golf course and and i think that's how people need to look at it yeah did i say too much no that's great Paul what, you, what you've just said and I was just getting a, a picture there when you were talking about the comedian on stage you know and him kind of shouting and trying to get his point across or his joke or whatever it is and and I was just wondering you know what is it that that drives that in somebody and I, what I could feel was probably a huge sense of fear that I'm going to be a failure. They're not going to laugh at my jokes. What will I do? I'm standing up here. I'm so exposed. There's a whole lot of people looking at me. My God, if I fail, what's going to happen? And I suppose just to bring it back to integrity, what would it be like if he were if he were standing in his integrity? You know, would he would he really care that much? Would he make maybe joke about himself? not being able to make the audience laugh or whatever. It's just that I think when we go into the fear, we we do lose a bit of the integrity because it takes us to a different place in ourselves. I agree, because basically when you when fear takes over, mm. then the authenticity is lost mm. and you're trying to fit in for what you think the crowd wants. So you effectively... You're not being true to yourself. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say to that, actually, I was just thinking, uh, remembering back my networking days, you know, in those networking days, you went to a meeting and then you had, you had to get up for one minute. You had to introduce your, your, your business to the group of people that were sitting around having breakfast. I do remember when, people came for the first time and they got up and they were shaken by fear and couldn't even get the words out, you know? And the vulnerability within that was an absolute winner, absolute winner. Those were the people that everyone walked up to afterwards and said, oh my God, you know, this was amazing and great. And they were still shaking, <laughs> you know? Uh, and those were the ones that I never forgot. Right. So wow. that vulnerability is something we must also sort of factor in, which is part of authenticity, really. It is. Yes, it is. Yes, it's being very real. Mm. And it's the courage to be vulnerable. Mm. Yeah, that's a good way to look at that, Martina. And of course, it does endear people, you know, to you, if, if, if they think you're nervous and vulnerable and, and all of that. 
they they like to come up and make you feel okay and you know that was great and all of that yeah I can see that I I've experienced that myself and and this takes us back you know to what we're talking about integrity we're talking about without prejudice you know we we we're, we're looking at a co cooperative resolution an inclusive resolution and whichever way we get there, as long as we are authentic, be that now vulnerable or angry for that matter, or completely sacred neutral, um, it all goes. It's all valid when it comes from a place from here. Yes. Kaminia, would you would you like to add something? Unmuted. Well, but listening all of you, um, it's made me thinking because I was talking to one of my friends yesterday. I think there's like there's so much confusion around. <laughs> I guess it's because all the changes that are happening that nobody knows what's happening and the people that know doesn't want to tell because supposedly is the way how the society have been uh, presenting to us. Like it, you know, suppose we uh how the way I feel in myself, like it, we have some more so many masks on like if you're going to the job you have to present it yourself in a certain way with the family center way in the with your friends you know it's i can see people how we behave depending where we are it's just like a mask on mask out and it's kind of fascinating to me because it can be so much shame around that thing that happened and people get lost because people are just depending to the news and then they don't have the time or they don't have the courage to find out by themselves what's really happening. And it's, uh, it's creating this like uh, loneliness at the same time, even the people are uh, uh, in with companions or they just, we're going to the judge just because we have to survive, to make the money, to be alive. But who, 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 who we are really, are we? It's not really presentable because we are afraid to show what is our own really, really most burning desire to uh, accomplish in life, because we have to be accommodated all the time with family members, in the job, in the, with friends. Sometimes we don't want to go to places and we go because somebody by us. It's, I'm talking to myself because that's the way I have been living my life. And then to just lately that I, I said, I used just to respond yes, yes, yes. And now even I say yes, and then uh, you know, I, I catch myself, oh my guy say yes without even thinking. Because it was the automatic response to to please everybody except myself. And it's like uh, this is I can see around my friends and you know the family members, so many challenges that people have on this day. And it's because of us, because we we uh, forget about what really we are and what we want to do because we all be, be in pleasing other people and everything from the what the society presenting to us. That's the way I see it for myself. Yeah, no, absolutely. This is why we're having chats like we are having, like sovereignty last week, yeah, you know, integrity, responsibility, you know, um, authenticity, all of that. It's all, it's all part of of everyone's journey at the moment it's a big thing it's a big thing i mean there's another thing another phrase that came up that came up but what do you make of social responsibility i read mm -hmm. this the other day. What, what is social responsibility for you what does that mean to you you mean responsibility for myself social responsibility if i throw oh. this out there what what does that mean well it's not we no, how we have been presented that you have to get your job or, you know, the women's, especially women, we have more opportunity now. But before, I remember when I would grow up, if you are 20 year old and you cannot be married, then you are behind. You have to have kids, you have to have a husband to be representing you. You know, the, the man had to have the job, he had to care for the family, he had to, to be the provider, the bread earning, you know. And, uh, and the way how now the kids that they don't have the communication with the parents anymore because you know they are in the social media they get all the information what what they need is there in their phone 
there's not that communication anymore. There's no sit in the table and talking about anything because everybody just in, in this, you know, looking the phone. It having like a breakdown in the whole society from my point of view. And then uh, what we were expecting before is not what we're expecting now. It's like everybody trying to figure out what really I want to do because I have been working for 20 years in my life. I don't feel happy. People recognize now that they don't feel happy. That, that there's something else. You can see in the face of people, you know, everywhere. It's like that's uh, wondering what I'm supposed to be doing here. It's, you know, doesn't matter the position. You can see that in people's face. It's like we are lost. Where I where I have supposed to go, you know, that's why my perceive, perceive from people lately that no matter the position and the and the level in the society, you feel that loneliness inside. So what you what would you consider your social responsibility at this moment in time in your um, at the level of your evolution, guys? Well, for me is to be more centered on myself, to uh, make it seem that really matter to me, and not get cut off. Like I used to be with my family dramas or my friend dramas or my job dramas, you know, just remember myself. Like yesterday, I, I just stopped everything and went for a walk about 2.30. And I forgot about everything and everything else. And I went just enjoy half hour walking myself in the wood and doesn't care about anything else. You yeah. know, watching those little scenes for me, uh, like a half hour just reading a book. And forget about everything else. You know, it's it's like something that I had to culti cult cultivate myself little by little, because yeah. you know the mindset always is what it has to do. You have to be responsible. You have to respond to somebody. You have to to help somebody. Now I I catch myself and sit down. I, I obligated myself yeah. to remember what's important for me is to um to learn about myself. Because I got to the point I didn't know who I was. Yeah. Because yeah, because I was I was pleading, you know. Now I'm I'm looking for those little moments. I watch sometimes like a comedy um uh, series, even in my my iPad on my phone, just like on our just laughing, obligating myself to laugh because mm -hmm. I was so serious about to resolve problems that I forgot to laughing, and then I catch myself. And say, Last night was like one hour just watching one of those past um, series that was about laughing because I imposed myself that because if I follow whatever they presenting us is to be worried all day long. And yeah. then I cast myself and I push myself in the position now, you know, little scene, I don't have to spend money. However, it bring me back to concentrate myself on me, not yeah. to what happened next. Well, thanks for that, uh, Herminia. What, what, who else wants to go? Social responsibility. What do you consider as social responsibility for yourself right now? I would say at this point, working on me so mm -hmm. that whatever I present socially isn't a reflection of my trauma and my prejudices and and my shit that I've worked my shit out and that I can come out with just joy and love and a pure emanation of who I am instead of like the stuff that I haven't healed from. Oh, Mary. Yeah. yeah, I would, I would feel exactly the same as, as uh, Jen. I would feel that it's, it's really important that we know ourselves and work on ourselves. Interestingly, that that title, Martina, always makes me feel uncomfortable. Um, when you said it first, I thought, oh, it, it just brings up something in me, like a demand in some way, that there's a demand in it somehow. And and that's obviously coming from my experience, you know, in, in different communities and whatever. But I, I do think that that's the best way to be in community. And I suppose, you know, just, you know, if you were looking at, at the world globally as and your social responsibility, I suppose it is about who, if there's something that you see that you really 
have a problem with and and it just doesn't fit with what you think is being you know kind and integrous towards people maybe to have the courage just to, to voice it you know that that maybe that there's too many people silent about about what needs to be said and I think that that's I do think that fits in somewhere with social responsibility on a global level. Even I'm not even thinking locally, but I mean, if you take that point locally, even in a small community, if people did say what needed to be said and, you know, there wasn't the sort of hush hush and things tolerated, I think we would have different communities because I think that the, there's a social responsibility somehow for people to to name the truth and even if it's just their truth that it's named cool thank you mary paul social responsibility from your perspective right now ah, it's a tough one because i actually believe the term social responsibility has been <clears throat> twisted out of all proportion um, and social responsibility has basically translated into everything that you do in life uh, has to get the approval of the herd or be peer reviewed. So um, I find the term social responsibility a bit problematic because when we look at the social part, what is the social part? Um, is it the microcosm or the community, the street you live in? Is it the greater community around the suburb? Is it the city? Is it the country? Is it the world? Um, and I, social responsibility, I think that socially I can only be responsible to myself because my view, values, norms, religion, creed, call it what you want, works for me where I am, but it's not necessarily going to work in China. So um, I think social responsibility is first and foremost a responsibility to yourself in, in various forms of being true, being authentic, being all the things we've discussed. And hopefully that permeates energetically into wherever you go. Um, but I think there's too much of an emphasis placed on you have to be socially responsible. Well, I don't know what that means. Uh, responsible to, to which segment of the social? So I think it's 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 actually about the self, um, and if you're responsible towards yourself, hopefully that projects uh, onto others wherever you go in the world. Um, but I don't. I, I think the the concept is, you know, it, 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 it's the people talk about social responsibility, and at the same time they talk about diversity um i i don't think the the two the two are are married together and so i think it, it it's all about the self um if you can't be responsible to yourself there's no way you can be responsible to anybody else or to any society or to um, a country or whatever so uh, to me it's about responsibility to the self and allow that to project from yourself and hopefully people pick up on it. I think uh, we, we can safely say that we all have sort of uh, same sort of aspirations in that, uh, with that regard to, to social responsibility, <laughs> you know, I mean, we on this group anyway, this is, this is part of our key elements to work on self mastery. I, I just want to add the sovereignty here, you know, and not stepping on other on other people's journeys and not bastardize uh, other people's 
opinions for that matter and just let them get on with it and look after yourself do your own thing and stay in your joys joy and gratitude um and as as we all said it, it's just going to reflect out you know that is the responsibility of every individual you know mm-hmm. to to get ourselves in that sort of uh, state of mastery and then if everyone does that if all the pieces of puzzles do their work the big puzzle can finally be put together right yeah. yeah 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 so do we have any 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 other questions any ideas any any uh opinions any truths that we want to bring forward with regards to integrity uh with or without prejudice uh well you know martina now that you mentioned that's the last word <laughs> i was thinking because really I feel that we are less uh, happy because we're always trying to help other people to be happy. <laughs> Forgot about how <laughs> I agree. <laughs> well, that's the best comment I've heard all night. <laughs> My goodness. God's oh, with us, isn't it? It's, it's that old saying, put, put the oxygen mask on yourself first. <laughs> Or the other thing, I always use the, the coffee and the foam analogy, you know. <laughs> the coffee, make sure your cup is full and you can, you know, well, only if your cup is full, you can start sharing it, you know. <laughs> we forgot that. <laughs> that kind of thing. Well, yes, that is our social responsibility. And I'm sure there's a thousand other things we could discuss, but I think we're running out of time. <laughs> Unless we're having any, any, any closing Closing words from anyone? Just happy to see Paul with us today. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you. It's yeah. nice to be back. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank and you. also, it was okay. his idea because you know he he came up with uh, with the with pre- with and without prejudice. You know, mm-hmm. so it's always mm-hmm. like, it's always great to you know get just in, in, like phrases like that and we can talk about it for two hours and I you know and make actually sense out of it right mm-hmm. and and bring more ideas maybe for other people to look at as well and they might get triggered they might get inspired and this is why we're here <laughs> for so that's a goodbye from us from Earth Nouveau the show without prejudice oh by the way jen jen you're still here right i am yeah next wednesday we have christopher jacobs coming on and uh, he's been on with us um once or twice before and uh, he'll talk about the things that that he's been up to you know he does the lifting podcast he's working on other podcasts he was moved to the east coast uh, working on some new tools that they have in their shop. So um, Chris will be with us next Wednesday. Fantastic. And are we going to use the normal Earth Nouveau login? Yeah, yeah, or? yeah. I'm I'm going to go in and then you take it. You 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 take it on. It's easiest. Great. Yeah. All right. And okay. by the way, we're going to keep the old time, so we're going to stay on the same time that we did today. And then because you know we're switching in the UK, but we we're going to leave it the way it is. Oh. So you guys are on, what is your time? EST, 12 o'clock or something? It'll stay on at noon next week, but Martina will be, Martina's going to fall back an hour a week before we do. I'm adjusting it. And then I think we've got one more week. Sorry, before we all on the same wavelength again, Mm -hmm. timeline rather. Okay. 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 All right, guys. Thanks for today, huh? Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Bye.